Greetings, fellow artists. This is a self-portrait that I painted in oils. This is also my first YouTube video. And of course, I made some mistakes. Hopefully, that doesn't get in the way of you learning and being entertained watching me struggle with this portrait. You see, it's been over a year and a half since I last had a habit of painting. So, I'm a bit rusty. And hopefully, my mistakes and vulnerabilities somehow inspire you to keep going. If I did everything perfectly, then maybe you just applaud what I did and not learn so much from it. But I'm trying to share my journey with you guys because I believe that you can advance as an artist as well. See, I wasn't born with a brush in my hand. I wasn't even that good as a child when I drew. However, simply by getting in the habit of drawing and painting and doing it regularly, I have improved. And also learning from the right people, practicing the right things. Anyways, this video is about me just getting back into the swing of things. And I hope you enjoy. If you're interested in what colors I use, you can pause the video here. Hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. The algorithm says thank you. I am thinning my paint with odorless terpenoid to get the paint to flow more easily. I am blocking in large flat shapes, starting with the background, to get the placement of the head by painting what's around it. I am using my brush to check the angle of my face and match it on the canvas. Richard Smid, in his book, all the prima everything I know about painting warns against a wobbly easel. It would be best if my easel did not move when I touched it with my brush. The black that you see me using here is a mixture between yellow, red, and blue. You don't use much yellow, but if you use more red, you get more of a warm black. If you use more blue, you create more of a cool black.
Getting the shape of the hair helps to frame the face. If you can get the shape of the face and the shape of the hair correctly, it goes a long way in creating a convincing portrait. If you have a friend standing across the room or down the street and they're too far away to see their eyes or nose or mouth, you can recognize them simply by the shape of their hair and the shape of their face. In drawing the center line of the face, imagine your brush is a tiny ant crawling up and down the features of the face. The face is not some flat image. It is 3D. It has dimension. It goes in, it goes out. If you think about the face in 3D, then that will come through in your drawing or painting. Although I might think about it in my head, I don't usually draw out the construction lines of the face. I do find it a useful tool in your tool belt to help you if you're stuck or having problems drawing the face. I'm no expert, but I've found it useful to study the Riley rhythms or the Asaro head. A problem in this photo reference, and many photos used as reference in painting or drawing, is that the lens is a wide-angle lens. There will be distortion, especially towards the outside edges. One thing I'm doing differently is I'm using my brush to mix my paint as I go along. In the past, I would mix pools of paint of different values before I even started painting. Most of the time when I start painting, I begin with the shadows. If I start with the lights and get the lights with the titanium white into the darks, it's very difficult to get out.
You'll see me putting down a brushstroke next to another brushstroke, almost like a mosaic. If I can get them in just the right place, the picture will begin to emerge. Part of this is the concept of a la prima, to go for the finish from the beginning, to try to leave the brush strokes in evidence, a record of your painting, instead of trying to blend out the brush strokes and cover up what you did, you're trying to let it show through all the way from the beginning to the end. I'm using a paper towel to lift out the paint. This is the subtractive method where you take away instead of adding to the painting. Every stroke and all the times you see me mixing paint are in real time as they happened. However, you can see that the camera goes out. This is a common theme throughout this painting, and unfortunately it means that certain angles and certain footage were not recorded. I apologize and will try to work on that in the future. As David LaFell has said, you put down a stroke and you leave it. Each stroke has a definite beginning and end. You can see me hesitating. The truth is, I'm probably going too fast. As Glenn Vilpu has said, slow is fast. 
if you do things the way you should the first time, you won't have to undo them later. Think of it more as chess than checkers. Thinking about your next move, your next brushstroke, what you're going to do next. Here I got greedy and tried to put in the eyes too soon. It's best to get the eye socket first and then put in the eyes later. To begin with general and work your way to specific. For me, this painting is just about getting back into painting, getting in the rhythm of painting. It's been a long time since I've had a steady practice of painting. And I know that this will not be my best self-portrait. But it is a record of where I am today and the fact that I should have listened to my own advice and not taken long breaks. I would say, if you want to improve as an artist, one of the best things is to not take long breaks. However, that's exactly what I did. We have reached a crucial point in the painting where we begin to transition from dark to light. This is where you can begin to sculpt and carve out the painting. How you handle this transition tells the viewer a lot. It says how smooth or round a form is or how sharp a point is. Although the paint I am applying looks light compared to the shadows, I have made sure to leave enough room to go even lighter for the lights and the highlights. start out, I'm ignoring the glasses. Instead, I'm trying to get the face beneath the glasses. If your concept was how much distortion there was in the glasses, then maybe you would approach it differently. help with not getting caught up in the small details. And to keep the brush strokes in evidence, I try to use as large a brush as possible. If you like this content, please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when I release more videos. I 
often wish that I would have left more of my initial block in in the finished piece. There's a certain spontaneity and overall effect that you get at the beginning that you can lose towards the end. You don't want to sacrifice the overall for the small. You don't want to get too caught up when you're painting the little features and ignore the whole. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one.